Hello YouTube, this is Frugal. In this short video, I'm going to show you the correct way to tweak FSX to get the performance you want. I'm not going to walk through all the tweaks that are out there, but I am going to show you the correct method for doing it. Now before I start, there are two ways to run each test I'm going to do. One, if you're incredibly anal, and I think a very small percentage of you are, would be to reboot your PC after every test. I don't tend to do that. I think the vast majority of you will not want to do that either. So the second way um, is just to make sure that before you run these tests, you run FSX and perform the test within FSX without testing it. The reason for that is what, what you're going to see, I'm going to fire up FSX, we're going to load a, a preset um, situation with FSX and then time it for 60 seconds and see how we do. I do that once before I even start benchmarking because when you fire up a Windows application, it tends to load in a lot of DLLs, a lot of data, and it will hold that in memory. So the first run is usually slower than any subsequent run. So I will run it once without testing it, and then every test after that, because I'm not rebooting, is using what's already cached in memory. Now, get fraps. Fraps has a tab in here called FPS that you can see on screen right now. Make sure the directory where it's saving its information is set, set up a hotkey, and turn on these check marks down here. FPS, frame times, min, max, average, and stop benchmark after 60 seconds. What we're gonna use here is Fraps to measure Flight Simulator 10 uh, for 60 seconds and then output the results to a file and we can compare the files. Now in terms of actually tweaking FSX, what I would do, I'm focusing more on the tweaks that you can do in the config. So let me show you where the config is. Uh, I have this up here. So if we go into, on Windows 7, go to your user directory, make sure you've got the options set to show hidden files and folders. There should be an app data directory in there. Go into roaming, find Microsoft, find FSX, and there will be an FSX.CFG file in there. Now, my FSX-original is the original config just after I had installed FSX before I did anything. FSX config as it currently is, this current one right here, has a couple of tweaks in it already. What I will typically do is set wide view aspect to true, and I will typically also, uh, I think that might actually be it. No, 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 high mem fix. If you find the graphics section in here, there is a, an entry that you can set called high men fix. I turn that on. Those are the only two tweaks I'll do before measuring anything else. Now, what a lot of people tend to do when they're tweaking FSX is they will hit up Costas' tweaking guide, which is an amazing guide, but they will run through and put in every single tweak that he says. Don't do that. The idea is you want to improve the performance of your sim. So within the sim itself, set the display settings where you would like them to be and then don't mess with them ever again. Okay, every time you go into that dialog, it actually updates your FSX config file. You don't want that to happen. So set them fairly high or medium or wherever you normally have them. Then leave them alone. Now we're just messing with this file. So before we start, I'm going to copy this file out. I'm going to paste it back in. It will give me an FSX-copy. So we're going to call this pre-tweaking. Now, for my tests, I tend to use the PMDG 737. NGX. It comes with a situation called Before Visual Approach, which puts the NGX um, fairly low, descending into Innsbruck. So there's a lot of scenery going on, mountains flying past the window. The aircraft is set up to descend and ultimately land, so there's a lot of automation going on in the aircraft. It is a fairly taxing situation. So what I will do, I will kill applications I don't need. So we'll get rid of Steam here. We'll get rid of my virus scanner. We will get rid of the Navigraph updater. We will get rid of Dropbox. Now I have a relatively clean machine and we'll run the test. So we run the test without doing any tweaking, first of all. Fire up FSX. Let's get rid of the fraps window here. Remember, control shift F11 is what I set for my hotkey. By default, it is F11. Once free flight comes up, click on load. Find PMDG 737 NGX before visual approach. Do fly now. Now the other cool thing with the NGX is that while the aircraft is configuring itself, there is a countdown on screen. Follow the countdown. What I tend to do because I'm terribly nerdy is I'll actually say it out loud from about five downwards. As soon as you get down to zero, hit your benchmarking hotkey. So here it comes, it's loading up. There's the green bar, it's counting down from 18 seconds, setting up the aircraft ready for this approach. You can already see there's a lot of scenery outside the window. You can already see my fraps uh, mark at the top left. By the way, if you're using a frame rate limiter, turn it off for these benchmarks. Five, four, three, two, one, go. 
Now what will happen, the frame rate view has disappeared. It will come back at the end of 60 seconds. As long as you check that 60 seconds box in Fraps and it will come back red initially. So you're waiting for that. So we'll just watch this run. On subsequent tests, I won't make you sit through this, but we'll just watch it run for now. So you can already see we're descending, which means it's drawing more and more scenery. Autogen is now kicking in for the town of Innsbruck around the airport. It's drawing trees, it's drawing water. Now once again, do not mess with your display settings. Set them where you would like the sim to be and leave them alone for the purposes of benchmarking. You're more concerned with what you change in FSX config and its effect on your sim based on a static set of configuration options within the sim. So any second now, we should see the counter come back, which will be, there it is, at the end of the test. So hit escape, hit end flight. Sometimes it will crash, sometimes it won't. Today it didn't. Let's close the sim. Now, on my hard drive, in my C directory, within Fraps, there is a benchmarks folder. There it is. Now these are CSV files. If you have Excel and you're interested, you can load these CSV files up and they will show you all sorts of interesting information. Like on this frame, it took this many, whatever, milliseconds to draw the frame, you know, so on and so on. I don't tend to worry about those. I'm more concerned with Fraps log at the top. So I'm gonna rename this before major tweaking, okay? We'll take a look at that. So my average is 29.917. That is the number you are most concerned with. Not minimum, not maximum. You're concerned with the average. You, how is your average overall performance within the sim? If you focus on maximum, you can easily get this up to 110, 120, but your sim will suck. Uh, if you focus on minimum, it's a fool's errand. You really wanna be focusing on average and making sure you have consistent average good performance. What I will do now, before we do any further tweaking, is do it again, just to make sure that we have somewhat valid results there. So I'll fire up Microsoft FSX once again. We will go through that same test again. It's very tedious. And like I said, some of you, a very small percentage, will probably get better mileage out of rebooting your PC after every single test. I don't tend to do that. There are a lot of things that I wanna tweak, so I tend to do it this way. I will run two untweaked tests, and prior to running those tests, also run up the situation I'm running up right now, just to make sure everything is cached in memory and we're good to go. So once again, loading the situation, it's gonna put us in the aircraft above Innsbruck. There it is, there's the countdown. And we will try to hit that benchmark key, which on my system, yours is F11, mine is control shift F11. We need to get that firing at zero. So watch the countdown, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Okay, test has ended. So we exit the sim in the same way as before. No control C to get out. End the flight and then end the sim. Just make sure that every time you do these tests, they are consistent. We had a crash there, not unusual, unfortunately. And what we will do now is we'll compare this log to the one that we had previously. Make sure they're pretty much the same, and they are. So my average 29.933 on the last test, 29.917 on the test before that. So it's actually gone up. It's, you can see here the effect of caching stuff in memory. My minimum dropped up, my maximum went down. The average is about the same. So we are getting fairly consistent results. Let's delete that one. Now you can start making your changes. Now the key here is not to make a ton of changes. You wanna redo what I just did after every single change. So the first thing I'm gonna do Everybody recommends, let's add in the Affinity Mask solution. So Affinity Mask FSX, here it is. I think it's a section called Job Scheduler, yeah, and set the Affinity Mask to a number, which on my machine, which is a quad-core Core i7 uh, with hyper-threading enabled, would be 84 if I don't want to use the hyper-threads, or 252 if I do. So I'm just going to copy that. We will open up my FSX config without changing directory. Here it is. So pop this open, add that section at the top there, affinity mask equals 84. Save the file, quit notepad, run the test once again. So 
So we load exactly the same situation, follow exactly the same steps every single time. You want to have the conditions under which the test is run to be as near identical every single time as possible. So don't go changing your views. Don't be pressing keys or buttons or moving joysticks to make the aircraft change course or anything like that. Keep everything exactly as it was on previous tests and remeasure after every single change. So the aircraft is loading up now. Wait for that countdown. And again, because I'm very nerdy, I will tend to vocalize it from five downwards. It lets me get the rhythm. Five, four, three, two, one, go. And I'll see you in 60 seconds. So there's the end of the test. Once again, hit escape and the flight. If it crashes, it crashes. If it doesn't, we will exit. Great, it didn't. So we will exit. Now, look at your benchmarks file, find Fraps log and rename it to what you just did. So affinity mask, in my case, 84. Let's get rid of these. We don't need them. You might. I don't. Before major tweaking, average was 29.917. Affinity mask 84, which is a highly recommended tweak that everybody says you should add in. 29,967. That's why they recommend you add it in. Notice my minimum came up and my maximum came up and my average climbed. We like that. Now let's do another tweak. Once again, just showing you the process here. Not gonna run through all the tweaks, just showing you the process. So let's go back over here. There's my FSX config. Another common tweak, highly recommended if you have a very fast machine, and I do, is buffer pools. Use pools equals zero. We'll put that in, save it, get rid of this, and run your test once again. And again, every time, not messing with options in the sim, not messing with different situations, not changing the weather or the time of day or anything like that. Just load a fixed situation. The NGX before visual approach situation is a very, very good one because there's quite a lot going on. If you want to run it with the weather, you're going to get lower frame rates because it's drawing weather. You're not really concerned about that. You're more concerned about the individual effect of individual tweaks on your system. Okay, so here we are after the test. Now, I didn't actually run a test because my sim wouldn't start, which is interesting. Every time I loaded up that situation, it would not initialize the aircraft. That's useful to know as well. You saw in every other test, it worked just fine. Now it's not. Let's go and see why. The holy grail of FSX performance, this website says, on AvSim. I just want to see that I've spelt it correctly. It's always a good idea to double check these things if you're having problems. Yep, all in capitals. Pools equals zero. Use pools equals zero. We will go and double check our FSX config. Here. Buffer pools, all in capitals. Just like that. Use pools equals zero. Hmm. Let me try my test once again. If after three or four times you're still having trouble, remove the tweak you just added. Don't just go on everybody else's word that on your machine, this is a really good tweak to add. It's your machine. Everybody's machine is very different. So load before visual approach. Fly now. Let's see what happens this time. So it's loading up. What we're looking to see here on my machine in particular is whether that is going to resolve itself, whether it's just an FSX quirk or something more sinister. On my machine, it's something more sinister. Look. What that tells us is that use pools equals zero in combination with affinity mask on my machine in particular is causing an issue, we think. That's our hypothesis. So the scientific route to take right now would be to prove the hypothesis and the way we approve it is we go back into our config and remove it and see what happens. So we're gonna take that out. I'm gonna save our file and we will try once again. So click on fly now. If our hypothesis is correct, that adding that tweak added instability to the machine, then we prove that hypothesis true by removing it from the config file, which I just did. So this time, having failed three or four times previously, we should see the NGX initialize. Oh look, you get the idea, right? 
I'm not even going to let that finish initializing, we'll end the flight. Anyway, like I said, I'm not going to run through all the tweaks. I just wanted to show you a, a, a method that I use there. It's somewhat scientific. You make sure that the test circumstances are identical for every test. You use a proper benchmarking tool which can record numbers that you can verify and check. And you do this after every single tweak to your FSX config. Don't mess with your FSX display settings. Set them once and forget about them. You're more interested in what happens in this config file that increases or decreases your performance or damages your stability, as we just found out that particular tweak did for me. Thanks for watching. As always, my name is Frugal. And I will see you soon.